for decades South Africa had been broken by the apartheid regime, which finally got lifted in 1991. They had been banned from not just the first two Rugby World Cups, but from all sports competitions for many years. Soon after, the South African national rugby team was readmitted to international rugby. It was announced that they would be hosting the 1995 Rugby World Cup. Recently elected President Nelson Mandela wanted to use rugby as a tool to help heal the divided nation. Mandela made some big calls, such as allowing the national rugby team to keep the springbok as its symbol and nickname, which caused controversy due to the springboks being used as a symbol of white superiority by this apartheid regime. In South Africa, amongst white South Africans, they were sort of revered and honoured um, and loved, but um, amongst non-white people in South Africa, I think the the Springboks were a sort of a representation of apartheid and oppression, so they weren't loved by non-white South Africans. There was only one non-white player in the team, Chester Williams, who was used as a symbol to inspire non-white participation in South African rugby, as well as being the poster boy for post-apartheid South Africa. Well, um, I only met Chester once, but he, he played for our local team, which is Western Province. And so for many people, obviously, aspiring to get into rugby from disadvantaged backgrounds, he was a real inspiration. Um, he certainly was in the team on merit. He's a, a great try scorer, but also a great defensive winger. Uh, certainly one of the best tacklers. The tournament began on the 25th of May with South Africa recording a surprise 28-17 win over defending champions Australia. This helped make foreigners believe that South Africa were a serious force at the World Cup. South Africa followed up the win against Australia with wins over the two other teams in their pool, beating Romania 21 points to 8 and beating Canada 20 points to 0 a game which saw three players being sent off. South Africa advanced to the knockout stages, where they beat Western Samoa 42 points to 14 in the quarter-finals. South Africa then progressed to the semi-finals, where they had a close win against France, beating them 19 points to 15. They now had to face their great rivals, New Zealand, in the final. The final was played on the 24th of June. It was a close affair, with South Africa winning 9 points to 6 by half-time. New Zealand then scored a drop goal in the second half, which meant that the game would now go to extra time. South Africa and New Zealand both scored penalties in the first half of extra time, but a drop goal from South African fly-half Joel Stransky would ultimately be the difference between the two sides. After the game, Nelson Mandela, wearing a Springbok jersey, handed over the Webb Ellis Cup to the captain of the South African rugby team, Francois Pinar, which became one of the most iconic sporting moments in history. <laughs>